The 2022 NFL Draft is in the books. The Bengals, well, they added six players. We're going to give our overall thoughts on their draft class and talk about all three players they added on day three. Hi again, everybody, and welcome in to Cincinnati Bengals Talk. I'm James Rapine of AllBengals.com. Welcome into Paul Brown Stadium, where the past three days they've been a whirlwind, and the Bengals, they've moved up, and then they moved up again, which I don't think a lot of people anticipated. They got a Dax Hill, and then they got a lot of speed, and I think that's the biggest takeaway from this 2022 NFL draft class is the athletes that they drafted. They drafted guys that all tested really, really well during the pre-draft process. And I asked Zach Taylor about it, and we posted Zach Taylor's entire wrap-up press conference detailing a lot of different things from seventh-round pick Jeffrey Gunter and his thoughts on him uh, to just thoughts on this overall draft class. And I asked him about that because all these guys are testing, like, I think the worst one was Zachary Carter, 81% among defensive tackles I mean the dude tested really really well and he's like look it showed up on the tape and obviously it starts with the tape with coaches the game film you want to see that but the best thing is when that and then all this athletic testing and the measurables and all of that stuff the 40 yard dash and the shuttle and the three cone and all those things that you guys talk about when they're married together and they line up when it's like oh man this guy he does have good bend, and he is quick twitch. And, oh, well, he was really good at the shuttle, and he was really good at the three cone. Man, he's got that long speed, and he's got the burst. And, was well, 10-yard split and his 20-yard split were really, really fast, as was his 40-yard dash. And that's what the Bengals were able to get throughout this draft class. You know how I feel about Dax Hill. And I'm going to do a full video on grades once I can wrap my head around each player a little bit more. These instant grades, well, that's nonsense, right? And I don't want to do that. I'll give you my instant thoughts. And then we'll digest it a little bit more, look at these players a little bit closer, and we'll have grades this week here on Cincinnati Bengals Talk. It's one of the many things that we'll have. But but let's talk about this day three. In day three, we talked about it. It was offensive line. You're thinking multiple offensive linemen maybe in, uh, or, or multiple offensive players at least, and it just it did not happen. And, and I'm looking here. Uh, Cordell Volson was their first pick, and I don't think anybody had him on there. Well, they could take him big board you know out of North Dakota State uh, that being said th- that instant grade you're like oh who's that right I think he's got a shot and in, in, in a, a pretty good shot for a few reasons uh, yeah obviously he comes from winning program and it's a, a, a small or it's weaker competition I would say not small school it's weaker competition compared to a lot of these guys who are playing for the Georgias and the Ohio States and all, everything like that but 6'6 320 uh, finishes guys into the ground. You watch some of his highlights. You can see he'll finish and tested well when you put his test scores in the guard position, which is where he's going to compete, according to head coach Frank or uh, offensive line coach Frank Pollock. And so when you look at that part, because a lot of people are looking at him as a tackle, well, he's not going to be an NFL tackle. Yeah, he's he's 6'6, 320. Uh, you know, he's got good size and, you know, height and all of those things. But uh, the thing that stood out to me about Volson when Frank Pollock and Brian Callahan were up here uh, talking uh, about him on Saturday was that, was the attitude in a good way, the work ethic, uh, the mindset. Um, and so when, when you marry those things together with a kid who is talented, is used to winning, is willing to do what it takes uh, to gain weight, right? He, he talked about, uh, Volson did on the conference call, how he would try to gain two pounds a week when he was doing a strength and conditioning program to be a tackle. And he played 37 games, 37 starts at the right tackle spot for North Dakota State. So I'm not saying there's not going to be a learning curve, but if you're talking about a kid who works really hard, is 23 years old, is used to winning, has gained weight when he's needed to, and is a pretty good athlete, well, then then maybe uh, taking him in the the fourth round wasn't too crazy. Uh, I will say it, it did feel like he would have went in round uh, at, at the end of round four or early round five before the Bengals' fifth round pick. So it may feel like a reach, right, compared to whatever draft analyst you want to look at. But that's not always the case. And it, on the same side, not every guy that was projected to be second, third, fourth round 
is necessarily necessarily a faller to the NFL teams because of evaluations, because of medicals, because of all those things. So the Bengals obviously felt really good uh, about Cordell Volson. We'll see if he's going to be in the mix there for that starting left guard job. Um, certainly, that's going to be one of the many things we cover uh, over the next few weeks and really all offseason long is that left guard position, and we'll get into that. But I think the most surprising thing of the day wasn't that they took an offensive lineman in round four, but round five – You know, we're waiting and we're in the media room at Paul Brown Stadium and not this room. This is the news conference room. And and I'm writing about Volson and and getting an idea of who he is, what he is, all of these things. And, well, the Bengals, breaking news, they move up. They trade their first seventh round pick to move up in the fifth round, the first seventh round pick in their fifth round pick uh, to move up. And who do they get? They get Tyson Anderson out of Toledo. And I like Anderson. Because he's the the fastest defensive back maybe on the team, certainly the fastest defensive back that they drafted, which is kind of crazy to think of because Cam Taylor Britt in the second round, 4-3-8. Dax Hill, my guy, 4-3-8. This guy's 4-3-6. And it isn't just uh, elite there, elite three-cone, the change of direction. He, he was really good at the, the three-cone uh, short shuttle as well. So, look, I, I like Anderson. I like the pick. I think a lot of people thought it was redundant. And I understand that part of it as well, where it's like another safety. But I think this defense is evolving, and I think they're going to give you a lot of different looks that you didn't realize. And the other part with Anderson, he's going to help out Darren Simmons' unit a ton because he's a big special teamer in Toledo. And I think that a lot of people assumed that Dax Hill was Jesse Bates' replacement. And I still don't necessarily think that's the case. But what I do think is the case is that a guy in Tyson Anderson – could be Von Bell's replacement. I'm not saying it, it happens, right? I think there's a path where Von Bell stays here and signs an extension after the 2022 season. He's going into a contract year. At the same time, if they extend Jesse Bates, well, that would be extending Bates, right? Putting a ton of money into a uh, 25-year-old, right, who's in his prime. And Dax Hill is a first-round pick. And so now you get another young guy who can play special teams. If you end up signing Von Bell, play special teams this year with him on the roster. And, and so that, that to me is something, and, and you look at it, man, that safety room, they're, they're loaded. And, and that's the other part is I think they just wanted a faster secondary. And, you know, I get it. I understand it. When you face Deshaun Watson, which they're going to have to do, like it or not, when they face Lamar Jackson, when you face receivers – like the Steelers have. Chase Claypool is big and can run. Deontay Johnson is a freak. And George Pickens, say what you want. They got weapons. And and so it's uh, – and it's not just them. It's in the playoffs, right? Do you have to deal with a Miami with Hill and Waddle? Because that's scary. That sucks. Uh, the, the Chiefs, I know they kind of changed what they do, but not really. They went and got Sky Moore, and, and so they're going to still have speed. And so – you want to be able to have guys that can run, 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 change direction, move well. And I think that they believe Tyson Anderson can do that. He's versatile. He can play both safety spots. Uh, I would expect him uh, to do that, to, to move around a bit. But, um, you know, it, it's not like he's replacing Dax Hill or anything like that. I think he's going to be primarily a special teamer unless asked to do more because of injury. And then the seventh rounder, and and there was a long wait between that fifth round pick and then that final uh, seventh round pick. I like this kid, Jeffrey Gunter out of Coastal Carolina. And I'm not going to pretend like I knew much about him. I didn't. But uh, he's going to be an edge rusher. And whether you want to call him an outside linebacker, whether you want to call him, you know, just a, you know, pass rush, um, you know, edge play whatever you want to say he'll be listed as a defensive end in the official uh Bengals depth chart I would imagine but he's got some juice to him ran a 4 7 40 yard dash tested in the 97th percentile uh relative athletic score so that takes into consideration his 30 bench press reps of 225 um and produced had 22 and a half tackles for loss at Coastal Carolina over the past two seasons 13 sacks so it's a kid who produced at a high level uh, or, or was productive, at, you know, it had high production. It wasn't playing necessarily a high-level Coastal Carolina, but then tested really, really well. And when you marry those two, I think he's got a shot to make the team, and that's all you can ask when you're drafting the, the 252nd player taken in the 2022 NFL draft. So overall, clearly the Bengals wanted to get more athletic, faster, 
on the back end and on defense in general, and they did that. They were able to bolster the defensive line with two players, add three players to their secondary, all of which can fly. I mean, these dudes have wings. They could all represent Red Bull because they can just fly with the best of them. And then they get an offensive lineman that Frank Pollock really likes. I'll tell you this. Might not have been your guy. Might not have been on your radar. Certainly wasn't on my radar. You didn't hear me mention him. But Cordell Volson, I wanted to see how I phrased it. I think it's Frank Pollock's guy. I think he's someone that Frank Pollock believes in, met with on Zoom, likes his makeup, likes everything about him. And good offensive linemen come from anywhere. You know, middle of the, middle of the fourth round, you like him, take him. And, you know, it'll be interesting to see if he pans out because this one thing this team, this organization does not have is equity built up in the, uh, the eyes of you, me, everybody, right, when it comes to developing offensive linemen. So maybe Cordell Volson can help change that. So we'll see. But the Bengals, six players in the 2022 NFL draft class. I would have taken the over if the over-under was set at seven and a half. I would have taken the over because they had eight picks coming in. And uh, even if it was at eight and a half, I might have said over because you never know. They might have traded down. But instead, they end up with six, quality over quantity. I like that aspect of it. We'll see how they do. I'll have my official grades coming out. We also have a one-on-one with Dax Hill, the Bengals' number one pick, baby. Yeah, we got a one-on-one coming. So that's why you come to Cincinnati Bengals Talk for exclusive content you're never going to get anywhere else uh, to be able to see in the media room here and information you're not going to get anywhere else. So hit that subscribe button. Make sure you check out allbengals.com. I have a ton there on these draft picks if you want to read it. Uh, Certainly have videos as well. And also check out the Locked on Bengals podcast. It's the only daily Bengals podcast. And there is hours of video here on YouTube on Locked on Bengals or wherever you get your podcast. So for Andrew Fox Miller, who's been killing it, our channel coordinator all weekend long, I'm James Rapine signing off for now on Cincinnati Bengals Talk right here at Paul Brown Stadium.